you. Thank you very much, Fabio. Uh, and thank you all. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. To, uh, and, and thank you for joining us uh, to celebrate together with us the, um, the first anniversary of the FAO Multilingual um, E-Learning Academy. Uh, we are extremely pleased today to have with us highly esteemed experts from our uh, some, uh, some of our partners of excellence that I will be introducing later on. And uh, without further ado, I would like to, be sh to share with you um, uh, a little bit our innovative learning methodologies for, for sustainability. As you know, uh, sustainability is humanity's greatest challenge. And uh, to be able to face uh, all the various global challenges, we, we need um, competent professionals which are uh, able to, to take the right decision, choose the appropriate programs and strategies, but also they need to be, um, uh, they need to have a pool of multidisciplinary competences. And these multidisciplinary uh, competences need to be also complemented by also a very strong interpersonal skills, the ability to negotiate, to, to listen actively, to communicate, etc. And this is exactly the objective of the FAO eLearning Academy. It is to transfer skills and competences. We, we, I, I really would like to focus on this word of competences because we really do a very um, thorough analysis of the professional profiles and the competences that are required uh, for sustainability. And we design uh, our capacity development interventions and our e-learning courses based on these professional profiles and on the specific competences. I also have to mention that uh, the FAO e-learning academy is really the result of um, of a collaborative effort involving a number of partners, over 200 partners uh, worldwide, and it is multilingual. Uh, we, we really try to provide access to anyone, anytime, anywhere in the world. Really, we are very much focused and aligned with all of the SDGs, and in particular SDG 4, uh, which is universal uh, education. Everything is provided for free as a global public good. And uh, so far we have reached over 700,000 learners throughout the world. We, um, we cover a number of thematic areas. Um, so for example, sustainable fisheries and aquaculture, sustainable forestry, of course, climate change, climate smart agriculture, uh, sustainable food systems and nutrition, um, responsible investments in agriculture, markets, um, but also uh, food safety, uh, food losses, food waste, etc. And um, also crop improvement. So the thematic areas are um, very diverse and uh, they, uh, the, the common thread to all of them remains sustainability. I also want to mention very briefly uh, that we work with different types of organizations. So we work um, with the UN and development agencies. Um, for example, these are some of them are mentioned there. Uh, we work with universities and academic institutions, and we have created a number of masters and postgraduate degrees with a number of universities. We also work with NGOs, CSOs, and we are noticing a great interest from private sector uh, in our courses, but also mainly on compliance uh, and, and sustainability. Uh, compliance to the SDGs and, and, and sustainability in general. Uh, what I wanted to mention is that we work with these different partners in, uh, on different aspects. So we work sometimes on the design, on the development, on the language adaptations, on the dissemination, promotion, etc. But it is really a collaborative approach. And at the moment, um, the different UN agencies, but also big regional organizations like ECOWAS, SILS, uh, COMESA, they are using our courses uh, also for their own uh, capacity development activity. Also, we have a very close relationship with the European Commission. Uh, uh, and they also benefit from our courses uh, in their learning platform. 
So this is just to, to, uh, to give you an idea of the types of organizations we work with. We also contribute to many United Nations uh, initiatives and networks. These are some of them. And uh, we are also very pleased to have with us also a representative from the United Nation um, Scaling Up Nutrition Movement, who will be uh, also uh, contributing um, later on. What I wanted to mention also is that innovation is crucial uh, in transforming mindsets for sustainability because the new leaders, the new change makers that 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 we want to see um, need uh, yes need to have a new approach, a multidisciplinary one. And we in the FAO e Learning Academy try to uh, adopt to use innovation in 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 all the in different components. So we, we we try to innovate in the design of our, our courses, of our interventions. We innovate in uh, the content we provide, and we try to innovate in the pedagogical models and learning solutions that we offer. What do we mean by that? We mean that for the design, we adopt um, a collaborative, multi-stakeholder uh, learning needs assessment, which means we work together with a number of partners worldwide and also representatives from the target audience groups to define the specific learning needs of the target audience. So it, it, it's a design, it's a co-design together with the target audiences to make sure that we really target what, what we are providing. We uh, also use a, a methodology which is called a topic task analysis, and we really are very much job oriented, competency oriented, and uh, very much aligned with the professional profiles that we want to see uh, in the transformation towards uh, sustainability. So um, this part of, of co-designing is really focused on better understanding the audience. What are the changes that we want to see? What are the, 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 the job tasks that they need to perform better? What, um, what are the new professional profiles that we want to see for sustainability? So th these are the questions we ask ourselves. And usually uh, these collaborative multi-stakeholder uh, learning needs assessments were done, uh, of course, in a face-to-face -face setting, but with uh, COVID, we are now using other methods uh, to do it. So we use live interviews, online questionnaires, uh, synchronous live events to try to still have a collaborative design and a collaborative uh, development of the content. Uh, I also wanted to mention that uh, the content that we try to, to the, in the design, we try to also uh, always have together in the design academic institutions, professors, non-state actors, this idea of multi-stakeholder is very important in order, to, in order to have an integrated approach uh, in, in, in what we produce. So um, then we also have, uh, we use innovation in the content because we try to always uh, use cutting edge evidence-based evidence uh, knowledge. We use um, innovative methodologies and practices. For example, uh, for some of the SDG um, indicator courses that we have developed, the methodologies didn't even exist. And some of the indicators were not qualitative or quantitative, but were completely linked to other things like uh, legal frameworks, etc. So really the innovation also in the methodologies that we propose in, in the content of the, of the courses. Uh, we are very much competency-based, as I mentioned. Um, very much, the content is very much aligned with the professional profiles, aligned with the SDGs, and always gender and culturally sensitive. So this is also uh, another characteristic. Um, regarding our pedagogical models and our learning solutions, of course, there also we try to bring innovation as much as possible. We are always following uh, all the adult learning theories, uh, and we try to integrate in our courses a number of uh, methodologies and, and um, learning strategies. So for example, we use case-based scenarios, we use simulations, uh, storytelling, 
demonstration practice. We also um, serious learning games. Um, we also often uh, add um, pedagogical agent, agents and avatars that follow you in your learning experience. Uh, we, we are now using also micro learning. And um, we also try to use cutting edge technology, authoring tools and software. So this is also part of the innovation that, that we try to bring. So um, I also wanted to mention that I believe, I mean, we, we all believe that the more you diversify your, your methods and your pedagogical models, the more you have a, a, a great, the, the greater the impact, let's say. So we, in addition to the methodologies in the design of our interventions, we try to diversify also the delivery methods that we use because uh, each individual has different needs, have different preferences, and therefore, by diversifying your pedagogical model, uh, you are likely to have a greater impact. So in addition to the uh, over 350 uh, multilingual uh, e-learning courses, we also uh, have university degrees that I mentioned before. Many universities are integrating the courses as part of the master's and postgraduate degrees. We also organize uh, international online uh, technical webinars. We Some of the courses are also mobile uh, responsive for target audiences in remote areas. We also organize MOOCs, which are massive open online courses. Uh, we used to do a lot of face-to-face -face training interventions. We also do blended learning programs. So the idea that I wanted to convey is that we try to diversify the delivery methods. I also wanted uh, to uh, mention that um, we have just published uh, the, the guide on e-learning methodologies and good practices, uh, which documents over 15 years of experience. And it's we are trying to share our experience, the lessons learned, things to avoid, tips, etc. And the guide is available at the links here. Uh, you will also have this presentation available on the FAO e-learning uh, website. And we will actually do a specific launch event on the 15th of July. And, and this is the link for, for the registration. Uh, I don't want to go too much into the details, but the guide really covers all the different aspects to consider when you are envisaging to, to create uh, and, and to start with e-learning in an institution. So of course, what are the benefits? Uh, how how, uh, how do you how do you include uh, mobile learning, social interaction in your activities, etc.? And after, how do you design them? And um, um, what are the different methodologies and and uh, strategies that you can use? And of course, how do you can also and and a last part on collaborative learning, uh, the advantages, uh, uh, etc. So. This is a little bit what will be discussed in detail uh, in the launch event uh, 15th of July. To continue with in innovative methodologies, we, um, we have been uh, with Future Food Institute that I have to mention. Uh, I, we are actually extremely pleased to have with us today uh, Sa uh, Sara Roversi, who is the founder of uh, Future Food Institute and who will be giving you a bit more details on what I will be introducing now. Uh, we have conducted with Future Food Institute uh, two 24-hour global um, marathons for sustainability. The idea was to try to involve different stakeholders with different perspectives, uh, sharing not only the challenges they have towards uh, with sustainability, but also their experience and good practice related to sustainability. We managed to have uh, over 100 50,000 viewers in, a, in, in the 24 hours with uh, over 30 main work sessions uh, in English, French, Spanish, and, and Italian, uh, over 160 experts worldwide who have contributed, but from different, um, from, from, from different um, basically professional profiles. So we had decision makers, we had students, professors, we had uh, also indigenous populations uh, representatives who shared with us their concern, etc. So um, we are also documenting this, these uh, events and uh, the publications are 
um, for, 20, for the year 2020 is, is available and uh, for this we are still finalizing this one. And they will of course be available through the FAO uh, eLearning Academy. With Future Food Institute, we are also, um, uh, we have created a, a very innovative uh, capacity development and learning uh, type of uh, event, which is a Climate Shapers Boot Camps, uh, to try to really um, convert uh, all the uh, technical knowledge, technical expertise into something that everybody understands in order to be able to contribute um, and, and to become a, a climate shaper, a, a change maker, let's say. Uh, and, and so um, these are really, we're trying to develop a key figure, uh, a, a key professional profile uh, in the circular and sustainable uh, food value chain. So this is really the objective, is to provide them with competences that they need uh, to face the, the, the challenges uh, we are all facing. So the next one uh, that we have organized uh, with the Future Food Institute, it will be in Marettimo in Sicily from 13 to 19 July. Uh, we are organizing another one in September. And these are really unbelievable uh, learning opportunities because we also um, organize study tours. Uh, participants have the possibilities to go and to visit and, and to look at new innovative and, and uh, good practices for sustainability. So it is a very, it's very much uh, based on experiential learning and um, it has been extremely successful. Actually, we won uh, a world prize for that. I will leave, uh, I, will let, I will let Sarah talk to you about this later. Um, we also uh, organize international technical webinars. So this is done uh, on a regular basis. And, uh, and, and uh, we are doing these, we are organizing these webinars together with Future Food Institute, with the UN Sun Movement, uh, with Agrinium, and with the United Nation um, SCAP, which is the Economic and Social Commission for Asia uh, and Pacific. Uh, these webinars, these series of webinars have found to be, uh, have been extremely successful. What we try to do is after the webinars in order to uh, valorize them and, and to make them um, available for anyone in the world, we provide the recordings, all the materials, but also the statistics that we gather uh, during the, the, the webinars. And this is all available in the webinar section of the FAO uh, eLearning Academy. Then I would like to conclude with our certification system. We have started, so um, we have started with the digital badge certification system. This is a system which, uh, that is transparent, uh, impartial, evidence-based, and it is really a system that allows to certify competences, the competences acquired, and it allows to better match uh, employment opportunities with the pool of competences that, that professionals have to offer. So uh, it is really a very versatile system where you could just accumulate the different badges that certify different competences that you have. Uh, so you can build your professional profiles with a pool of competences that are certified with these badges. And these badges can follow you in your LinkedIn, in your ePortfolio, in your CV. It is really an accreditation system, which is quite uh, versatile. Um, the, just to let you know, the digital badge system is not just a graphical element. So first of all, to earn it, you need to pass a final uh, scenario-based, competency-based test. So the questions and the questionnaires at the end, the test at the end is competency-based. So it's not about remembering uh, knowledge or, or the principles that were in the course, but it's really about applying the and showing and demonstrating that you have acquired the, the, the competences. And behind the graphical element, you have all the metadata related uh, to the competences acquired, the date, the name of the course, your name, etc. So these are this is just to show you some examples of some of the uh, of the badges we have developed for our for our courses and um, these are some of the badges for the SDG indicator courses that, uh, that, we, um, that we have. And uh, here in the FAO eLearning 
uh, Academy, you can find all our different uh, publications if you are interested in understanding better how we work. So um, I have concluded and now uh, I am extremely pleased to, to start um, giving the floor to our, um, our guests. Uh, which are uh, that we are extremely pleased to have. So uh, I, we will start with Sara Roversi, who is the founder of Future Food Institute. Sara, can you please share with everyone the different activities that we have been doing um, in the past months together? And um, we are really very pleased to have you with us today. Sara, the floor is yours. You have 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Christina. It's uh, always a great pleasure to, to be with you. Also because in the last years, I think we have been achieving uh, very important goals uh, and there's still a lot to do together. So I'm going to share my screen if I can. Yes. Okay. okay. I'm allowed now. Very good. So... I want to share with you a little bit what we have been doing together with uh, Christina Petracchi and the incredible team of the FAO eLearning Academy. And I want to share with you the journey starting from the beginning, because the first time I entered in FAO and I get in touch with the FAO eLearning Academy world, I was uh, frustrated and very impressed. Why? because I found out that there were a lot of knowledge, a lot of things that were already available, but not spread enough. And I was thinking, makes no sense to reinvent the wheel, makes no sense to start again, to create new application, to train farmers, to train people working in the food industries or training youth and young activists that wanna be part of the change, if uh, there's already a lot of knowledge and a lot of materials uh, that are available, are already in multiple languages, uh, are accessible, easy to understand and easy to spread. And from where we started, of course, we are very much uh, uh, exposed to new dimensions and uh, environment of education that are pretty unconventional. We are running our master's program inside the universities, we are running programs with the Ministry of Education, bringing food and climate literacy inside school programs. We work with uh, thousands and thousands of students everywhere in the world, but we think that bringing innovation in the educational system now is crucial. So together with Christina, we started this journey and we were focused on three main projects. The first one are our boot camps that we created to train food and climate shapers. The second one, hackathons. How we can teach to use hackathons as a methodology to grow together, to break the silo, to start to work between scientists, start uppers, the academic system, but also industries, farmers, giving the voice and giving the opportunity to every member of the food system to participate and be part of the change. And last but not least, our marathons that are for us a way to interact with the global ecosystem and to share our voice and to engage more people to be part of this journey. But let's start from here. We started the signing an agreement with the former DG of FAO and from where, from there actually started a long journey that was um, really <laughs> concrete and really practical. The first thing that we did was to design a bootcamp, a bootcamp that could mix the digital competence and the digital tool that already are available on FAO learning platform and experiences. And of course, with the pandemic, we were forced also to develop a just uh, online program that is 100% online. So reshaping the entire schedule of our boot camps. So now, as you see, we have one digital program that is a four week program. And we are very, very proud because we just won a very important award. So we won this, abroad, this award for studies abroad. And we were in the nomination for the most innovative program because we were really trying to give to, to, to those 
participants the opportunity to get in touch, of course, but also to get engaged with uh, very practical things, experiencing on the ground with their communities, going and visiting their farmers or the innovators, the startups, and so on, but to share that with the global network. Because in every classroom, we have together like uh, guys that come from more than 30 countries all together. And so you have maybe a student coming from Italy that is connected with someone that is in Iran or in Japan or in Southern, uh, Southern Asia or whatever, and they are sharing knowledge live. We were organizing dinners together. We were organizing exploration together digitally, but live, not just behind the screen, but where the screen is basically a touch point and so it was pretty amazing because um, we were able to create empathy to create engagement the people were there in presence in presence with their heart and say with their passion so this was the digital uh, platform that we have been creating under this uh, year of pandemic and then we started also the program in presence the program in presence and the program in, uh, say, digitally are uh, both designed trying to keep always the same elements. The same elements that are, say, the values that we consider like uh, something unique. So we want our programs uh, to be diverse. And Christina always underlined the importance of bringing diversity in all the things we do. Diversity is for us uh, the crucial element. Uh, and we try to have diversity, not only from the cultural perspective, but diversity in skills, uh, diversity in ages, because uh, we know how crucial is the role of youth for this uh, big uh, ecological transition that we are facing. But also we know that this is one of the most critical thing. We need to learn about how we can work together between different generations. Diversity, experiences, as you see here, practical experiences, experiments where we bring scientists and chefs and farmers together. And our students have the technical skills on one side, the values on another side, and also the experience is part, entirely part of the game. But then I want to switch on our tracks. Our programs are focused on four main uh, areas that we think needs to be regenerated. Our programs are divided in four tracks. The first one is studying innovative solutions to design what's going to be the role of food in the cities of the future. Talking about climate smart cities tackling the topic of uh, food loss and waste and every innovative solution we can find to tackle this issue. Then we are talking about climate smart oceans and all the issues related to oceans, sustainable fisheries, plastics, and all the issues that communities living in this area are facing. Then we talk about uh, climate smart farming and the issues we face uh, talking about resources. And last but not least, sustainable diets, climate smart kitchens. What we have been doing has been pretty intense in the previous years, but now, of course, also in 2021, we have a full program. We have a new boot camp that is going to start on Friday, and we are going to kick off our boot camp on Friday afternoon at 4 p.m. from the FAO Green Garden that FAO started and kicked off for the G20 summit. So we will be in Rome broadcasting from FAO Green Garden. And we are going to host also finally some boot camps in presence. I'm going to skip the videos, but we're going to share with you all the links. And I want to just focus on which are the main topic that we try to tackle and to foster because when we teach uh, those new skills to our students uh, we are very focused on fostering cognitive flexibility 
the cooperative approach, and this is something that we find also in hackathons, the circular vision, the circular mindset. And then, of course, all our experiences are very much transdisciplinary, and we try to foster as much as we can creativity, emotional intelligence, system design and the systemic thinking, and of course, also design methodologies. And we developed also our own methodology that we call prosperity thinking. And it's something that we have been developing exactly together with FAO. Life experiences are crucial for all our programs. And also, of course, we find those issues also when we talk about uh, hackathons. This is another thing that we did before working with FAO we have been already organizing hackathons in many different parts of the world, more than 80 hackathons organized in the last eight years. And we found out that hackathon is not just a fun way to get engaged with very smart guys, but we found out that hackathons are a learning tool, are a learning tool where all the participants, if you are a professor, if you are a mentor, if you are a startupper, if you are a scientist, whoever get engaged with an hackathon as an opportunity to grow and to learn. And so we started organizing hackathons. We organized hackathons standalone, like the Hack for SDGs, but also in every bootcamp, the final part is an hackathon. So our learning experiences always both digital and in presence ends with an hackathon, working together and uh, fighting a challenge and find a solution. And last but not least, let's talk about the marathon. Christina has been mentioning the marathon before. And let's say the idea of the marathon came up um, at the beginning of the pandemic. I have been very lucky in my past because I had the chance to work for three Olympic games. And when I was working for the Olympic Games, I was working for the Olympic torch relay. And the Olympic torch relay, it's a pretty magical thing that happened during the Olympics, because it's exactly when the message, the Olympic message, the Olympic mission, the Pierre de Coubertin idea of the Olympics, the fair play, the connection between population, and all the good principles behind that are spread in the country that is hosting the, the Olympics. And so when the pandemic started, for people like us that are every single day exposed to the world, building bridges around the world, was pretty frustrating. And so we called Christina saying, we need to connect the world. We need to connect the world. And this year we have the chance to connect it digitally. And like that came up the idea of creating our global marathon. We did it last year for the first 24-hour marathon on Earth Day, April 22nd. And this year, we doubled the experience because this year uh, we were very proud to be one of the official events inside the Earth Day platform. So on the big Earth Day um, celebration organized by the Earth Day Network from Washington, D.C., our program together with the summit organized by Biden, President Biden, there were also our digital marathon. And our marathon this year was involving almost 30 ministers from all around the world, indigenous communities, youth, kids, families, farmers, chefs, people very diverse that were really carrying the flame all around the world from east to west crossing the Mediterranean area and jumping and going in Antarctica and then touching all the different points in the world. And every single voice was sharing the same mission, the same passion. And the interesting thing is that this year we were also calling the network of the climate shapers, telling them, please share your climate action, saying that you are sustainable is not enough. You must share which is your action, show what are you doing, show what the impact you're making. And this is pretty amazing because uh, the community is growing and we can finally touch uh, what's the impact uh, this program is every day 
doing. So Christina will share with you all the information and I wanna just leave you with the last thing we did because yesterday Christina was with us in Catania, I'm now in Catania, where is taking place the G20 of education. And of course, we decided to do also a Food for Earth G20 edition, taking the opportunity of the G20 again to connect the dots and spread the voice and involve, involve our community of food and climate shapers. Because food is touching every angle of our society. We can talk about food, talking about labor, talking about education, talking about finance, talking about all the different aspects of our society. And we did it starting from education yesterday at the G20 of education. And this is gonna be a journey involving our community, our students, our fellows, and we're gonna go all around the G20 ministerial meetings ending in October. So please get engaged, write to Christina if you wanna be part of the game, if you wanna be part of the conversation, and if you or your community and your fellows wanna be involved inside our boot camps and our programs. Thank you so much, Christina. And thank you so much to all your team for the incredible work you're doing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sara. Uh, for, for this excellent presentation. I am uh, extremely pleased to have uh, also with us today uh, Mr. Fernando Cristobal Gonzalez, who is the head of section learning development in the European Commission uh, Director General for International Partnership. And before giving the floor um, uh, to, to Fernando, I just wanted to express our gratitude for the EU because the EU has been supporting the FAO eLearning Academy since 2005. And I have to say that the success that we have, we, that we have been able to have all this success also thanks to the support, the contribution. The EU was part of the design of many of our, our courses. They were part of the content development of many of our courses. They were also involved in, in the dissemination, in the language adaptation. So uh, really, uh, uh, this is a, a, a great expression of gratitude that, that I needed to mention. Uh, Fernando, the floor is yours. You have 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Well, you have already summarized uh, somehow the content of my presentation, which is about the collaboration that we are, have had uh, with you for a few years now. So, um, uh, well, first I would like to, to, to just start by, by clarifying something that perhaps for some participants might be a little bit unclear. Uh, we are the Director General for International Partnerships in the European Commission. Uh, before that, we were the, perhaps it is better known for most people, the uh, Director General for Development Cooperation. Um, we changed the name and we got reorganized in January this year. So now we are called the Director General for International Partnerships. So, um, we started, as you said, Christina, this fruitful collaboration quite a few years ago. I would start by 2009, when um, we start working together in development of, of, of learning courses to, to around knowledge sharing and food security. The idea behind this development is to provide those courses for the staff and uh, with the idea of, uh, of uh, enhance uh, cooperation between our organization and to harmonize the uh, ways of working and also to, uh, to develop a better uh, competence development inside the organization. That was, I would say, the beginning of, of this collaboration. I have to say that at that moment, and I would say until now, the access of this collaboration has been that FAO provided most of the times the expertise the know-how for the development of contents in the in the in the courses and the european commission provided financing for for the development of those of those uh, uh, learning resources um then the i mean the areas for these courses were uh, food security nutrition and agriculture these were these were the main areas uh, of 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 contents um uh, in in fact in 2017 uh, the fao and, and ec signed a collaboration agreement agreement that formalized 
this collaboration in the sharing of uh, e-learning resources and courses. Um, as I said before, basically uh, the contribution from the European Commission was in the funding of the development of this of these learning contents. Uh, the idea behind this, these courses was, as I said before, basically to develop uh, uh, enhanced competence inside the organization and also to share uh, um, ways of working between organization and, 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 and share best practices. Then um, the next step and the step that is already part of today, the, the celebration that put, that has uh, joined us together today is the creation of the of the EU learning academies of the of the of the, of the learning academies in the in the FAO that today makes one year in the European Commission in our case in the international partnerships uh, uh, director general it, it the, this academy was was created a little bit earlier in 2018 the idea behind the, the creation of these academies is to go one step beyond the initial objective of developing content for the for enhancing capacities inside the organization. The idea was uh, to uh, provide access to this to this learning content to a wider community, so that uh, um, sharing it with, in our case, with other member states, but also with other partner, partners, such as international organizations, such as you, civil society, partner countries, and in general, the public interested in uh, development cooperation, sustainable develop, development goals, etc., etc. So uh, the goal here are basically uh, to harmonize development cooperation actions through broad dissemination of our approaches, and also to increase visibility of the activities of our organizations and our actions and the ways of operating that we that we that we use. Um, then, in this slide, this is what the the I mean, some of it has already been been explained by Christina before. Are the main, I would say, um, aspects or the main um, uh, elements of both academies, which are that they are accessible anytime, anywhere. That's one of the main criteria. Anyone can join the, uh, the learning contents wherever they are, whenever they want and follow the, the, the learning contents that are available. So they are open for everyone. They are multilingual and they are of course free of charge. They are, those are the main, I would say, uh, elements that characterize, characterize uh, the, the, the EU International Partnership Academy as well as the FAO eLearning Academy. Um, then um, I just to be very briefly just to finalize, um, of course, this collaboration between uh, the learning activities is part of a bigger uh, collaboration between the European Union and the FAO. Uh, this partnership is, is, has been ongoing for many years now and it's growing up. Just to give you um, uh, an idea, a concrete idea of how this collaboration is, 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 is now uh, um, uh, functioning. I can tell you that in the period from 2018 to 2020, uh, the European Union co contributed with approximately uh, 635 million US dollars to more than 250 projects uh, around the world, uh, um, uh, I mean, uh, launched by, by FAO. All of those projects, of course, are, are, are centered or are, are, are around the, the, the notions in, inside the Sustainable Development Goals. So this is, I would say, in a nutshell, uh, the, a bit, the, the, the image of the collaboration that exists nowadays between the European Commission and FAO in the, in the area of sharing and developing together uh, learning resources for the whole world community via this new internet uh, uh, learning academy. So that is, I would say, all from my side. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you again for, for having invited inviting us to your uh, to your anniversary celebration.
Thank you, thank you, Fernando. And now I would like to give the floor to Tom, uh, Tom Wembeke, who is the Chief of Learning and Innovation uh, in the International Training Center of the uh, International Labor Organization. We have been working with ITCILO for many, many years. We have conducted a number of activities together, uh, and I will let Tom uh, give you more information about that. Tom, the floor is yours. You have 10 minutes. Thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, Christina. And thank you very much for inviting us to this uh, digital celebration. I hope that one day we also can celebrate it face to face, but uh, we have to work with the means that we have. And uh, I wanted to give a short contribution to this uh, celebration because this, I would call the partnership and the many partnerships that we have been hearing now, for me as a, being the chief uh, learning innovation officer of the International Training Center of the ILO, which is also a specialized UN uh, agency are for me really partnerships for sustainable learning uh, solutions. And uh, we are really grateful that in the, in the past years, and we're talking, I will always say the past decade, I've met uh, Christina at eLearning Africa in 2009. Time flies too fast, I would say. And also had the pleasure to meet a lot of the colleagues that are behind this FAO Learning uh, Academy, uh, Andrew, Mehmet, Chiara, Beatrice, all the different people. I cannot name them all, but also would like to pay gratitude towards uh, them. It's also not just a personal uh, contribution, but also an institutional responsibility. I mean, we're all working together, not for the sake of partnership. It's a clear goal. It's an SDG 70. And I think what I like very much about this kind of interagency, um, let's say, collaboration and partnership, that it goes beyond just the interagency. It goes much further. I think what I learned from the FAO Learning uh, Academy is this kind of network approach, this kind of network approach. I, if I already see 200 partnerships, that's something that you really can um, celebrate. And these networked partnerships are also, you know, very concrete and tangible. We've met at big international conferences from online Educa in Berlin to e-learning Africa in different, let's say, countries where we interactively, proactively actually exchange best practices in the field of e-learning as part of capacity development. That's really what our synergies are all about. So I was thinking, how can I contribute to this celebration? Because there's no, I mean, I should bring here, first of all, a virtual cake or something like that to really celebrate. But I'm going to celebrate it with three different words. And I think these words are, for me, the key takeaways or the the lessons learned from this collaboration with Christina and, and her team uh, on that. And the three words are very simple. One is related to scalability, but maybe a little bit more towards impact also. I mean, I'm already cheating here. That's two words. My second word was also mentioned by, by Sara quite a lot and also by Christina would be around innovation. And then my last word would be around uh, inclusion. And, and interesting enough, I've seen a lot of remarks in the Q&A on this element uh, as well. So let me use my remaining seven minutes to illustrate what I do I mean. Because as I said, FAO and also the ITC ILO as part of being a specialized UN agency, we have extremely large mandates, whether that's, you know, striving for a world without hunger or striving towards a world for decent work and social justice. The mandate is extremely big. And what I've learned from the FAO uh, eLearning Academy, I think it's one of the first initiatives within the UN that also can uh, show numbers. I've read the numbers, you are on visitor or not on visitor, on learner, 700,000. So that's almost a million users. And I think when we arrive in the area now, specifically post-COVID, digital transformation, I think these scalability numbers, really, we need to take higher. So I would say for the future 2.0 project, how can we move from 1 million towards 1 billion? That would be just, let's say, a question, a moonshot question for the future and the further expansion of the FAO eLearning Academy. As I've said, I've been following the Academy and the initiatives around it for the last uh, decades on it and now the first official celebration of the one year as it is right now there's a big history uh, behind it so scalability can we really move up scale up because our as i said our mandates are much bigger than the current numbers that we have and you are really spearheading in this particular um, area so let's move towards the second one uh, on um, innovation uh, two years ago I, I joined right before at 
no, two years ago in Madrid when the Secretary General was already, and he is here talking, I'm just going to stop his talking, but he was launching the thing that we need, to, we need to do different things and we need to do things differently. At that time, already long before COVID, he was basically saying we're going to abolish all non-essential traffic. And we even didn't know about the pandemic. It was just looking at how can we use technology in the most optimal way to basically exchange uh, knowledge. That was already a request out there. And when I see innovation in the FAO e-learning um, academy, what I like about it is not just about the technological rings and bells. The technology has always been very straightforward, simple, accessible, and actually also applying very universal principles of uh, design. Uh, one of the things that I always mention, and Christina mentioned already, the e-learning design guide that you now see, the 2.0 version, I think many years ago there was already a first edition, and the strength, I think, of FAO e-learning academy, that it has a very sound methodological basis that can be applied anywhere else in whatever capacity development project you are busy with. So this is something that we really... Um, nourish so innovation not just because of the technological mantra innovation not just because everybody needs to be innovative nowadays it's not innovative whitewashing really innovation because there's really a good strategy uh, and design uh, behind it so also there i would see in the new innovative methodologies that you're testing out from uh, micro learning towards digital credentials towards methodological new setting up events like hackathons and so on what are the future things that we can do differently because we are going to be forced to do things differently in the new uh, normal? And that's, let's say, the second keyword that I would like to emphasize. And maybe also looking at the time carefully, moving already towards my last, let's say, keyword that I find extremely uh, important. By the way, I was mentioning to the e-learning methodologies. For us, it should be in every virtual or physical library across the whole globe if you want to learn something about e-learning from scratch to finish this is really a, a reference uh, point and also congratulations to everyone who's behind this and i'm also looking forward to the launch of this uh, book in a few weeks from now this brings me to the last one and this is the with innovation as it goes hand in hand with inclusion uh, i've read here from the different participants uh, from Natalia Gutierrez, from uh, Jennifer that is asking, how do we have access for disabled person? How do we have access for people in rural communities? How do we have access for people without the necessary digital literacy skills? I think within a post, let's say pandemic perspective where the divides are even accelerating, we probably in the field that we are working now, we have to put digital inclusion as a kind of a top priority and with digital inclusion and not just referring to you know having access or having infrastructure or having connectivity either it goes way beyond it's a much much larger digital ecosystem which captures some of the elements that already were named from digital skills to digital literacy towards accessible service to accessible content it's an entire ecosystem and therefore i would like to invite and i'm, I'm very happy already that you know the with the birth of the FAO learning that a lot of these digital inclusion principles are already integrated into the design of it but I think we need to go further and do that uh, together that's why I also would like to invite and the FAO e-learning academy will be present there in our digital inclusion summit which is going to happen on the 7th and the 8th of July where FAO for us is actually featuring as a best uh, and good practice where we can learn from. But as I said, digital inclusion as my last, let's say, key contribution to this celebration together with innovation, together with scalability and impact for a better world. And that's what I would like to uh, contribute to this short, uh, let's say, celebration with a virtual cake and a big thank you to the Christina and her team for okay. doing this. Over to you. Thank you, thank you very much, Tom. Uh, thank you for, for the, the very nice three keywords. Uh, and I would like now to give the floor to uh, Deborah Didio, who uh, is a representative of the UN uh, Scaling Up Nutrition Movement, with whom we have been collaborating for a number of uh, webinars and also other activities. We actually were honored to have with us 
um, Gerda Berberg, uh, who is the, um, the UN uh, Undersecretary uh, General and also the coordinator of the Sun Movement, who participated in, in our 24-hour global marathon. So, um, Deborah, the floor is yours. You have five minutes. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Christina. And first of all, let me say it's really exciting to see over 150 participants joining today. And of course, such a, a panelist of really, really fantastic speakers. Um, I just want to share briefly our experience. Uh, first of all, I'm, I'm really pleased to be speaking today, to be invited to be speak on behalf of SUN, the Scaling Up Nutrition Movement. And I wish to congratulate uh, the FAO colleagues and the FAO eLearning Academy colleagues for the, this anniversary, hoping that it will be, of course, the first anniversary of many more to come. Um, from the Sun Movement perspective, the Sun Movement, the Scaling Up Nutrition Movement, brings together now 64 countries and four Indian states in finding solution to fight all forms of malnutrition through a multi-sectoral and multi-stakeholders approach. And the reason why we have, we're very excited to be part of this initiative of the FAO Learning Academy, and we approached actually FAO last year, uh, is the reason why we wanted to become you know, members is because first of all, I will say the positive energy of Christina and her team is really contagious. Um, we were immediately met with you know, energy and a really positive attitude and professionalism. Um, the reason also why we wanted to join the, the, the efforts of the FEO Learning Academy is because we recognize the strengths and obviously the successes that you have managed to put together in such a short time. I mean, we heard before about, you know, thousands, uh, hundreds of members, official members and thousands of users. And of course, you know, a huge variety of learning courses that are offered in different languages, which I think for for us at the Scaling Up Nutrition Movement, bringing together 64 countries with, from different regions and different linguistic background is really important that courses are offered not only on topics that are of course relevant to malnutrition, but that are also offered in different languages that people feel comfortable um, to, to, to work and to use. Um, the range of topics and the availability of courses, I think, is really something particularly appreciated by in-country colleagues. I've spoken to many Sun Movement colleagues at country level, from Asia to Africa to Latin America, and they're all really, really appreciative of how many courses are available on nutrition, food systems, but also other issues that affect nutrition, climate change, uh, of course, agriculture, etc. Uh, and I'm also pleased to say that as Christina already mentioned in the last 12 months, we have had many, many uh, colleagues joining as listeners in a number of events and webinars, but also as speakers. Of course, Gerda Berberg, our Sun Movement Coordinator and Assistant Secretary General, but also many colleagues from countries. We've had colleagues from academic institutions uh, bringing their experience. We've had colleagues from government also sharing their views and their perspectives. So going forward, I think the hope for the Scaling Up Nutrition Movement is that we continue this successful collaboration. We have an even more, a stronger collaboration that we can bring even more colleagues from countries to share their experience with others because in the end, they are the ones who really tackle issues every day. But uh, there also, there will be more courses. Um, the Scaling Up Nutrition Movement has launched its Sun 3.0 strategy from 2021 to 2025. Knowledge management, learning, lessons, experience sharing is critical for us. So in the four or five years to come, we will be investing more resources from a financial, technical, and human point of view to make sure that we connect with institutions and partnership platforms such as the FAO Learning Academy to make courses online, e-learning, remote, as well as in-person when it allows, available to the thousands of members of the Scaling Up Nutrition Movement in country. So we hope to continue to collaborate. We hope that there will be courses particularly that address financial financing for nutrition, which is something that everyone I think uh, has to, uh, you know, uh, challenges with. Uh, around food systems, building on the food system summit that is happening this year, 
nutrition, more courses on nutrition, building on, of course, on the Nutrition for Growth Summit that is happening this year. And, and we can think about more. We, you know, with, with our different experiences, we can bring so more. I wish to thank you all for the opportunity, not only to speak today, to really collaborate over the past, I will say almost 12 months, time really flies. And I look forward to uh, continuing to contribute on behalf of SUN and the many countries of the movement and the many stakeholders and networks in the movement with Christina and your team. And to make sure that, you know, we can tackle really some issues, particularly around nutrition and malnutrition. Thank you all. And thank Christina, you. again, thank you for your energy and Fabio also for organizing this. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much, Deborah. And we will always be very excited to collaborate with the Sun Movement. Thank you. Okay, and now our last uh, speaker, Mr. Lilian, Lilian Push, who is the Premium Alliance. We have been conducting a number of international technical webinars with Agrinium, and we're working also on a MOOC on nutrition together. I will leave uh, Lilia and give you more information about that. Lilia, the, the floor is yours. You have 10 minutes. Thank you. Oh, hi, thank you very much. Do you, do you see correctly my screen? The screen or not? It's okay? No, not at all. Okay, now? No. No. Oh. Vaut mieux que départage et repartage. Sur share screen. Ah, voilà. Voilà, parfait. It's okay. Ouais, ouais, ouais. It's okay now? No, paramètres d'affichage. Paramètres d'affichage. Je l'ai plus, je l'ai plus, je l'ai plus le paramètre d'affichage. Je suis désolé. No, what to do. No, à côté. À je ne l'ai pas. Je ne l'ai pas, Philippe. <laughs> Now. Ouais. Allez, OK. Well, good afternoon, everybody. And uh, allow me first to thank the, the organizer for inviting me, uh, in particular, Christina and uh, her team and, and Fabio. And uh, it's a real pleasure to celebrate with you this anniversary of the FAO eLearning Academy. And as I swore before, I will try to respect my five minute slot. Briefly, I would like to advertise and uh, to give you an overview of our organization, Agrinium, the French Alliance of Higher Education and Research for Agriculture, Food, Environment, and Global Health. Agrinium encompasses the competencies and resources of 11 higher education institutes, including veterinary school, uh, agriculture and agri-food engineer schools, and uh, two research institutes, INRAE and CIRAD. It gathers around 8,000 students and more than 5,000 researchers and uh, professor research. Our objectives rely on the provision of the highest quality of expertise, training, and research in agrobiosciences. Our mission is to contribute to the resolution of complex challenges in agriculture via a coordinated approach between higher education and research. And as such, to address even even more complex challenges like climate change, the scarcity of natural resources, food and security and nutrition, and what we call the one else, uh, global health of the human, animal, environmental interfaces. Our learning proposal consists in uh, multi-purpose and fit for purpose uh, training compiled on AgriNew, our digital university, accessible via our web portal, agrinium.fr. We propose a wide range of uh, free learning products from course modules uh, to MOOCs, webinars, or eBooks. In some cases, we also propose paid services when a mentorship or a, a competence certification is needed. 
some courses are already available in English and others are being planned. We are currently redesigning our website to easy access and use for our audience, which is mainly com compounded of students and uh, professionals. The FAO agreement signed in February 2018 aims at facilitating access to scientific, technical and vocational training for all students and learners who don't have the opportunity to learn in traditional face-to-face -face education system for reason of, of distance or cost, for example. It is also it also aims at participating in capacity building to support the development of sustainable agriculture in order to improve food security. This agreement is mainly implemented by Agrinium and the FAO eLearning Academy. To this end, we jointly organize events like technical webinar. Here, for example, the webinar on soil protection and land management we organized last year. Next fall, we will organize a MOOC on nutrition and food system, uh, co-designed by FAO and Agrinium experts. Here you have the detail of, uh, of this MOOC. As said before, our four-year agreement was signed in 2018, and we will initiate soon discussion for its renewal. For us, this partnership is obviously a, a cornerstone of our missions. Indeed, we share with FAO and specifically with FAO eLearning Academy our core goals, our core values, and our commitments. Uh, as such, we consider that we have to, we must have a shared future together. To conclude, I hope the time is okay. I would like to thank you for your attention and uh, once more, happy anniversary to FAO eLearning Academy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Lilian. And um, yes, in fact, our, our um, collaboration with Agrinium has been extremely successful and we uh, really look forward to the most of the coming uh, the So uh, we have to the end of our anniversary and I have a long list of thank yous to do but before that I just wanted to um, to mention something I saw some of the questions of the participants and they were related to competencies and I wanted to provide a bit more information on competent on these competencies that I was mentioning so the first thing uh, I also mentioned is that we are very much um, aligned with the professional profiles that we are targeting with very specific uh, uh, competences and the competences are completely different based on the thematic area that is covered in the course. It is obvious that if we have a course on climate smart um, climate smart agriculture, it is a very different uh, target audience than a course that deals with formulating uh, nutrition sensitive policies. And it has a completely different target audience and different competences. If our target audience is, for example, uh, forestry, if we are dealing with forestry experts who have to conduct a national forestry survey, for example, or if we're talking about uh, legislating for small scale fisheries, the audiences are different, the competences required are very different. Um, the common thread is always sustainability and the methodology that we follow to target these competences is always the same. Who is our target audience group? What is our overall objective for the, for, for, for the course? What is the overall objective and who is the target audience? What are their roles and responsibilities? What are their job tasks? And then thanks to this analysis, based on the job tasks that they have to perform and on the, their professional profiles, what are the skills and competences that we need to focus on for them to better perform their job tasks. This is exactly the methodology that we follow for all the courses, but the thematic areas are completely diverse and the competences, of course, are, uh, are completely different based and they are based on the thematic area that is 
covered. Um, I just wanted to ask uh, two seconds, Fabio, maybe to show the last slide. Uh, I don't know if it's possible to share the last slide. Um, thank you very much. So this is just, uh, uh, we are now, um, we have arrived to the conclusion and I, and I have a list, a long list of thank yous to do. But before I just wanted to invite you to the next uh, international webinar that we are organizing with the with Future Food, with Agrinium and UNS CAP on forestry, and also to invite you all to uh, the launch of the guide on the FAO eLearning Academy methodologies and good practices, which is going to take place 15 July. So uh, first, let me thank, um, let me thank and express my appreciation to all our guests who have been really fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to also thank um, the, my, my de our Deputy Director General and our uh, Director, Marcela Villarreal, who has always been, both of them, extremely supportive. Uh, special, special thanks to Andrew Nado, with whom I have been working for 20 years and which guidance is always uh, extremely precious. So, Andrew Nado, my team, my team, I would like to thank each single one of them, really um, extremely talented professionals. Here I have to mention also Beatrice Girardini, our senior instructional designer, who is also the author, the main author of, of, the, of the guide. Uh, this is really the result of uh, over 15 years of experience at the academy, but she managed to bring it all together. Uh, I would like also to thank who is behind the scenes. So Fabio Piccinic, Philippe Prévost, who is always with us, supporting us from Agrinium, uh, Sara Ferrante, and, uh, and all the others. And special thanks to you, the participants. Thank you very much for being with us and celebrating with us this event. Thank you. Bye-bye to all.